Hi there and welcome to another screencast on Scoreflash. This one shows you how to use Scoreflash with Playmaker. And I'm assuming that you have a project where Playmaker is already imported. This could also um, contain the rest of your project and then you still need Scoreflash. So I already have prepared that. Um, it's on the asset store. You can easily find it searching for Scoreflash or um, simply using the link um, on this um, uh, YouTube video. So now it's compiling the scripts and it will add a few folders, editor, plugins, and examples. You can close the asset store here. As you can see here, editor, this contains a couple of editor scripts, plugins. This is the main package. You should definitely read the readme and this PDF gives you a little bit of a basic um, starting point and um, plenty of examples. When using Scoreflash with Playmaker, uh, there's one thing, since Scoreflash isn't dependent on Playmaker, I'm not including anything that's dependent in, in, in the main package. Instead, what I have is a package that you import and you have to import that. And also, this is very important when um, you're updating Scoreflash, you always, after updating the main package, have to do that same procedure that I'm doing right now is import that package because this changes the actions if there are changes in, in the update. The same applies to NGUI and EasyGUI, basically all the integrations I have. Um, I need to do it this way because otherwise um, you'd get compilation errors if you'd import Scoreflash and didn't have Playmaker or NGUI or EasyGUI available in your project. So I do import and as you will see in a short moment, this adds a folder Playmaker Scoreflash. And this really contains everything that you need for using Scoreflash with Playmaker. Um, basically, what you really need here are these four C Sharp classes. And um, yeah, the rest is basically just examples to get you started. So basically, you could um, delete this stuff um, if you just want well, the integration, and you could also delete these examples. Um, it's very easy to get rid of all that stuff to, to avoid cluttering your project. So the first thing that you should see here is that when you, well, interesting, I recently had that already. Um, there it is. Uh, I need the action browser. And I'm gonna put that in here. This is, in my opinion, kind of a, well, that wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted it like this. This is, in my opinion, kind of a useful setup uh, for working with um, Playmaker. And you will find the actions that Scoreflash adds here, obviously, under Scoreflash. And then you see there's um, basically just four simple actions. Scoreflash push is really the, the, the easiest one to use. It just pushes a message and you can assign a color and an optional Scoreflash instance. And then there's the one for, um, that you use uh, with Follow 3D, which is um, a component that you can attach to Unity game objects. And then you can pass that um, as a parameter into the push method, and then it will automatically appear above or at the location of the object that you have attached that to. Then there's um, Scoreflash push screen, which uses screen coordinates and score flash push world, which uses world coordinates. So these two are kind of similar, but follow 3D is a little bit more powerful. And as you'll see, there's um, examples for all of these. So I'm gonna go right in there. As you can see here, and basically this um, little tutorial will take you through these examples and explain how they are set up. Um, you got the single instance Scoreflash Manager, which uses the um, multiple instances of Scoreflash, which allows you to have multiple very different configurations. And there's world space and screen space. So let's start with the simplest, simplest one. Um, what you'll see here, and this is actually something that uh, you probably shouldn't see, but um, I've added this little background. This is for the web player to demonstrate uh, when I'm showing this, uh, when I'm showing Scoreflash uh, on the web player, like what's going on here. So I'm gonna disable that. And this is just a little 
text message and when I let me see how I best arrange that. Maybe I should put that playmaker in here and also the actions in here. That should be well, I'm gonna put the actions over here. That's better. So basically when I open this, you can see that well, that's the reason why I didn't do that, because it's a little bit tight in space, well, but it's enough. Um, this is the simple um, finite state machine here for this little demo, and let's have a look what it looks like. Basically, it just shows a couple of different messages, one after the other. It's very simple stuff, but it's really good to get started. I mean, if you already know Playmaker very well, um, it really shouldn't take you much time to get started with using Scoreflash. So basically here in the beginning, I just wait for a second. And then this is the first um, state um, that, that has um, a Scoreflash attached. And it simply puts that hello world string out there. And it doesn't need a color because the color is coming, coming from the Scoreflash instance here. So as you can see here, um, I'm using the colors from the Scoreflash instance, which is a rather um, useful use case because you can do all these fancy kind of fades um, if you want to. But if you'd rather define the color in here, you could do it with this. So either you use um, none or you, um, yeah, you can use the, the Scoreflash colors from here. Um, and then as you can see, the score flash instance isn't assigned here. And the reason is because I don't need to, because I'm using the one single instance in that specific scene. That's the most simple case. And you should start with that if you feel a little bit, um, uh, well, like this is overwhelming you, but um, to do more advanced stuff, like having different messages in completely different styles or in different, different locations, um, you can also have multiple instances of score flash. Um, then there's a little bit of a more interesting example. Basically, this is just Playmaker stuff. Um, I get the um, system date time and put it into that format string. And then I build that string for that. I also have a couple of variables defined. Um, and then this is re um, the result is stored into message. And then instead of having, as usual, some text here, I'm using, well, a standard feature of um, Playmaker, um, use the text here from that variable, and then await. It's all very simple. Um, another example here, a random string, there's uh, three different strings and one is uh, selected randomly, it's the same principle. And finally, there's an example where the random colors are actually coming from the, um, from the action here. And then, as you can see here, I'm, I'm using the message color that I'm, I've defined here. So it's really very basic, simple stuff. And this example. So the next example, as mentioned before, is one where I'm using the Scoreflash manager, which basically means that I'm using multiple instances of Scoreflash. As you can see here, there's a simple message, then one with time and a random message. And these are, or these could be set up in different ways, like different locations. Basically everything that you can set up with Scoreflash, you can have differently in all of these. So the state machine is, as you can see, exactly the same as in the previous example. And the only difference when you look at it and inspect it is that this goes to different Scoreflash instances, but as we're using Playmaker, what you do here, you would just pull that over here into the instance with the specific state, and that's it. Also very simple. And then I'm gonna go full screen for this one. This one appears on top, and then there's one in the middle with a different font. And then there's one on the bottom, which is also having a different font. And you probably already see that it's really, really simple to use Scoreflash with um, Playmaker because Scoreflash is very easy to use and Playmaker is very, very easy to use. So what else would you expect? Um, oops. 
like we are. A little bit more interesting is this example because this is actually a rather complex example because I'm doing something pretty fancy in here. Yeah. Remove the playmaker background as usual because in this case it's actually wrong, but um, also it's not so bad. So probably you've seen this before. There's a couple of objects all flying around and these show you the different um, ways you can have score flash show the messages related to objects. As you can see here, this kind of pulls it after. And this one, you may not notice that, but it goes up and down because it's basically closer to you than, than the um, than, than the little ball here, than the little sphere. And here that's a, more like a typical example. It shows it right of that and it's um, always at the same location. Here the messages appear where the object is at the moment when the message appears and then they stay there. This is also possible. And basically this is using um, the uh, world space approach while all the others are using the follow 3d approach and as you can see this is in most cases probably the one you'll want to use but depending on what you want to achieve it might be different and then finally here that's uh, another one uh, also a very typical example where you have the messages appear right above the object this could be an orc or whatever and then finally this shows something that's very nice with score flash if you have objects that are moving quickly over the screen and then they disappear they can keep the momentum that's really what follow 3d um, gives you so and that's uh, something that you'll find here and i believe there it is, yeah, score flash component, score flash follow 3D location. That's really what that gives you. And as you can see here, each of these objects has a playmaker state machine attached. And you'll see here the score flash follow 3D script and its configuration. And so this really like leave behind is how much, depending on, how, on on the velocity, the, the messages are left behind. If that's zero, that means that the objects appear or always stay with, the messages always stay with the object. And if that would be one, they would be like dragged behind and then lose momentum means um, if that's a low moment, uh, a low value, it doesn't lose momentum. In other words, if the object disappears, in the middle while there are messages on screen they, they move on with the velocity of the object if you put that to one then the object would simply stop um well the messages would stop moving when the object disappears like when it's destroyed and then there's uh, offsets either in screen space or in world space and then you could also have a reference camera um, if you have multiple cameras on screen that's something that's actually necessary so that um the uh, screen position um, is handled the right way. So the state machine, in this case, is very simple. It simply just pushes the velocity. It gets the velocity um, with um, this action here. Get velocity, puts it in velocity y. Then I need to convert that into a string because I want to show it on screen. And then I've used score flash push follow 3D, that action. Uh, I'm using the owner. I could also speci uh, specify a specific game object. Um, in that case, it's the same game object that this is attached to, um, that the state machine is attached to. Uh, then there's the text, the color is coming from the uh, score flash instance and I'm using the one score flash instance instead of having multiple ones. And basically, as you can see, these all look kind of the same. The only difference you might find that most of them are using follow 3D and one, I believe, they, well, this one, <laughs> no follow 3D, this one here, um, uses push world and then I need a different set of actions. I need to get the position and put it into a vector game object position and then i can use that position here in that um 
uh, score flash action. So yeah, it's, it's really not that difficult um, to understand. Finally, um, the last example I have here, that is the screen space example. So the screen space example, as you can see, is also a very simple one. It just has these two states, um, push screen A and push screen B. The interesting thing here is actually just that you have to make sure that normalize is not checked because otherwise you get, I guess, uh, um, positions between zero and one and that doesn't work because you actually need the, the actual screen positions and pixels here. So I put this, I get the X and Y um, from the mouse and then I put it into a vector three because as far as I can see, Playmaker doesn't really have vector two, at least not in the standard um, configuration. Um, so I'm just using the X and Y here and the screen position that the um, uh, push screen takes, score flash push, the, that the score flash push screen action takes, <laughs> um, actually takes a 3D vector, but only uses the X and Y component. And the reason I did it that way is because I had the impression that this is the way it's done in Playmaker, if uh, I'm wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm not really a, um, a Playmaker user. I mean, I'm uh, just uh, a very basic um, uh, uh, Playmaker user, so I don't really know that much about it. So if you know how it's done better, then just let me know. But I had the feeling that this is the way it's done there. So I'm taking this um, screen position from the mouse location that I've assigned before. And then wherever I have my mouse hovering on the screen, as you can see here, when I started playing, start playing this, there appears the message alterating A and B. It's not very difficult. So, I hope that you liked watching this little video. Um, be free to give me feedback on that. Um, there's a link in the help menu when you've imported the um, Scoreflash package. It's help Noriana games and then there's yeah first steps with Scoreflash. That's the PDF file Then there's the product page and then this is um, basically the way to get in contact um, with me and other Scoreflash users. Um, there's a Scoreflash thread on the Unity forum. So if there's anything that you feel you need, something that's missing, or if you run into a bug, um, yeah, it's really the easiest way to use that. Um, or you could also just report something directly to me um, via email um, if you prefer that. But yeah, in general, I think it's, it's best via the forum. So um, if you already have Scoreflash, well, thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And if you don't, well, get it as soon as you can because, um, yeah, I'll appreciate that. And I think it's uh, yeah, <laughs> a really nice tool and you should enjoy working with it. And if you don't, well, let me know <laughs> and I'll try to make that a better experience for you. So thanks for watching and um, enjoy.